Hola, welcome back to Richard's um, chemistry explanations, I guess. Um, so uh, we have some work here. So first I want to go over just kind of what's done with the I do. And the we do, I might do that if I feel like it. Um, so, so I do is using this formula that you're going to be using a whole ton in this section, which is, I left my med drawing tools. I'll just say it out loud. It's going to be this Q equals M and then change an H. So this is a very general formula and it will change based upon what you're working with. So here's the one I'm talking about right here. It says given a heating curve for mercury, calculate its heat to freeze um, this at its melting point. So what does that mean? Um, whenever you're freezing something or boiling something, it takes time. So you want to consider this. If um, So I like drinking things like that are really cold. So I actually take, uh, I'm weirdo, so I take water from the fridge and I put it in the freezer for a little bit to let it ice up a little bit. Um, it takes time though, like 15, 20 minutes for the ice to form sometimes. Um, and it takes a lot longer for the whole thing to turn to ice. You're talking about at least an hour um, and more if there's more volume. So when it's doing that, it actually does remain at a constant temperature. Now, the way you see constant temperatures in the graph are these flat lines. So this is heat of fusion. And that is also, um, you could think about that as heat of fusion. So it's something becoming solid, but also something melting. It's the same thing, just ones in reverse. And here it says heat of vaporization. So turning a liquid into a gas, but it's the same thing to turn a gas into a liquid, just everything's reversed. So you're going to have opposite signs. So let's take a look at the math. So um, there is two variables here but you notice three things here so it's taking i would have written that a little bit different i would have put an n here instead for number of moles um but that expands into this okay so with this problem and i think all the problems in the homework you're given grams of something that's how we tend to measure a lot of things so grams of mercury and you want to use the molar mass. Now, where you're going to get that is um, either the problem is going to give it to you or you look at a net. So you would just look up molar mass of mercury and it'll give you, I guess, this number. It's high because it's a metal, so it's farther down on the periodic table. And then you multiply it by this change in H. So this is the, the heat of fusion. So Here's where a lot of mistakes are made. You want to make sure you use the right number. A lot of numbers over here. Heat of fusion is this guy. And you plug it all in and you get this result. Uh, for the we do, um, I'll just do a quick setup for you to see how this is done. So um, well, you want to pay attention to the stuff I highlighted because sometimes these things have more information than they need. I think it's like relative to all the stuff you've been doing, this math is actually pretty easy. Um, so it's complicated. They just throw some more things in there. Um, all right, so we want to find out how much energy. Energy is a lot of things, but in this case, we're talking about the heat energy required to do something. Um, Five to three is at uh, okay. So what this is talking about is that it's actually at this temperature, but um, if it's saying it's they're freezing it, that means the aluminum is actually liquid, so you're cooling it down. Um, so I don't know how much energy is required to freeze. So. I kind of want to say this is going to be a negative answer because you have to take away energy in order for something to freeze. So whenever something's freezing or even refrigerating, you can think about like a freezer or refrigerator, um, it's taking away heat. And in some refrigerators, you could even like feel at the bottom, you could feel the heat coming out, you know, coming out of the back or wherever it comes out, but it comes out. So in this one, I'm going to say it's a negative answer in the end. But same equation, we're just going to say Q equals 
And I'm going to use N because that stands for number of moles. And delta H. And delta H we want is delta H of fusion. Okay, so fusion refers to melting or freezing. The other one, this guy here, that refers to liquids and gases, changing um, state with that. So we got the number of moles, we get 2.5 moles of Al. Let me add the zero. The reason I'm doing that is so I remember how many um, sig figs to add in the end. So it's, that's that's three sig figs right there. So zero is significant. And then we have moles on the bottom here, moles of Al, aluminum, and the heat of fusion, which is 10.9 joules. Good. I didn't want to waste time with the calculation, but I'm going to do that just to just review um, sig figs and what you're supposed to do with those things. So I'm just messing around with my phone for a second here. Okay, so I get a result of 27.25. But I only have three sig figs throughout the whole problem, so I'm going to be changing this into a 27.3 kilojoules. And I said before I wanted to make this negative, so I uh, can't really squeeze a negative in there without making it obvious. So, um, So what I want to say, that's how much heat you want to remove to make the aluminum freeze. So that's aluminum turning back into the solid, which it normally is. So sometimes like the way these things sound is a little bit weird because like they don't normally think about freezing aluminum, but every time you've held aluminum, it's always frozen. And if you held it when it wasn't frozen, you wouldn't have any fingers. So now to the you do. Right, so we're going to answer all of this. All right, so everything on this page is done. So I'm just going to do some explanation. So um, I'm looking at the curve, and you have some good things written here. This is showing boiling. That is correct. And some of the states here. So here's what happens to this metal. So it from this state, it would be a solid getting hotter and hotter and hotter, but not actually melting, just getting hotter up into uh, 200. And this is Celsius. So... Um, a lot of times we do things in, in uh, chemistry, temperature is in Kelvin, but this one, 200 Celsius is very, very hot. Uh, the boiling point of water is 100. So you're talking about the metal getting really, really hot. And then over this period, it is melting, but it's staying at the same temperature. So when anything melts, the whole thing stays at the same, same temperature because it's kind of all like working it itself out together. Uh, what's happening is that the particles are gaining energy. So they're kind of like staying in the same position, but they're, they're kind of rumbling about just gaining potential energy, just kind of like getting angry and stuff. And eventually they turn into a liquid. So they spread out a little bit more. Uh, when I say spread out, there are some exceptions to that, but generally it does get um, more volume. Water doesn't work that way. Um, Anyway, I don't want to go into too many tangents about this. Okay, but um, the water or sorry, the liquid metal gets really really hot, and and at a certain point, this is a super big temperature here. Um, it will start boiling, which means the the metal actually starts to want to turn into a gas, but doesn't quite do it yet. Um, until a certain point. So during all this, it's gaining potential energy to turn into a gas. And at which point they spread out, which kind of you know looks like this over here. So let's go through some of these answers. We got a um, point where only a gas is present. That you wrote gas here, that is right. So you want to just put F there. That's good. Um, temperature at which vaporization occurs. So what does vaporization mean? That means turning from a liquid to a gas. Vaporization is is boiling. Those are two, those are sentences basically. Um, it's always going to be flat when it does that. You think about how long it takes like water to boil. Um, it, you see, you see like even like bubbles like coming up and whatnot. So it takes a while, but the temperature remains the same. So that's from point D to point E.
um, the point where a mixture of solid and liquid are present. So it's saying both these things. So that is going to be another flat line. And that's going to be here. So you want to think about that as if you have like a glass of water with ice in it. The, the whole thing's at the same temperature, the ice and the water. Um, not immediately, but after a while, it, they, they, um, they reach equilibrium where they're both there. They're both present. So that's B to C. This one, um, this one, I wasn't sure exactly how I should write the answer, but this is my best guess on here. It says where gas turns into liquid. So it's going backwards. So you're not just going just up like this in the diagram. It's going down um, gas into a liquid. That's a gas all at that point. But when it reaches this point, if it keeps getting warmer, then you're going this way with the same temperature. So I wrote E to D. So that order is important there. And I put that because it's the opposite of vaporization. Let me get rid of all this red crap here. Um, temperature at which the substance starts to freeze. That's 200 degrees Celsius. Now, again, that's, that's that sounds high, but it's a metal. And so this is a metal that was like a liquid that's turned back into a solid. And it happens at a very, very high temperature of 200 degrees because when we see metals, most of them are solid. Um, a common exception to that would be mercury. Mercury is uh, liquid at room temperature. And uh, we have range where there's only a liquid. That's C to D, which it uh, looks like you labeled. I don't know what the hell you there. Uh, okay, so that's liquid, C to D. And let's move on to number two. So calculate the amount of energy needed to boil. All right, so I highlighted some of these words because we want to understand like what they really mean. Everybody knows what boiling means, but like what does it really mean? So boiling is to turn something from a liquid into a gas, which is also what we call vaporization. Uh, we have this many grams of carbon tetrachloride. I put that, if you're dealing with a problem like this, you could always look up the molar mass from the internet, but I'm a dumbass because it already has that, so we don't need any of that. So we have that value already. Um, then we got all this information here, some which we need, some we don't. We don't actually need to know the temperature. Um, that just tells us what that is. It's not really important in the calculation. What's important is the heat of vaporization. And you put L to G, which I assume means liquid to gas, and this is solid to liquid. So that's exactly what those two things are. Um, and those would both be positive with how you set it. So to turn out li solid into liquid, you're adding heat, so that's a positive value, and to liquid into gas is also a positive. If you're going in reverse, you do have to keep that in mind and put a negative, like we did in the, uh, the we do. Um, so the formula we're using again is this Q uh, delta H. And I should have put a little bit of a subscript there, vaporization, VAP. So I'll put, add that in now. So we have the end. Now we're given the mass, so we need to convert that into the number of moles. So we do that using the molar mass, which is this. So everything I have boxed right now, that is N, that is the number of moles. And you multiply that by the heat of vaporization. Okay, this is my joules, paper cut up there. Um, so this should be your final answer, but I know with sick things. And I'm going to move on to the uh, next thing. I didn't complete everything yet, but He's on the way. So number three. So the heat of fusion for water and the great position. So again, I, I highlighted the stuff that we actually need and um, ignoring the other stuff we don't. Same formula here. Okay, so the question here, 
is how much energy is needed to melt 22.5 grams of ice. So the first thing I want to think about is the sign of the answer. Are we adding heat or taking away heat? Well, for melting something, we're adding heat. So it's going to be a positive answer. So this N right here is going to incorporate these two, two fractions. Because yeah, they give it to us in grams, we really want moles. So here is the molar mass of water, which I just looked up on net. Um, here's the thing. So every teacher has an idea about like what chart they want students to use and whatnot. So you want to use your periodic table given to you by your teacher or whatever they say about this stuff. So this is like a molar mass of on the internet, but maybe you want to use this one because maybe that's more common. All right, so I toyed around with like what answer you should leave. I think probably probably this one, which would be using 18.02. All right, number four, how much energy is needed to heat uh, a certain number of grams of ice to water? Um, what's going on with this one, and I'll continue in, in the next video, is that you have, have like three steps. You're heating the, the ice, uh, which is going to stay ice until a certain point, and then it's going to become this mixture of ice and water, and then it's going to become water. So those are the three steps. And yeah, this last one is talking about fucking mothballs and sublimination. So I'm going to need to, I don't know what it means to sublime uh, mothballs yet, but uh, yeah, I'll get back to you and do another one.